Hello. In this video I want to discuss error estimates for the approximation of a function by its Taylor polynomials. Now recall what a Taylor polynomial is. If we have some function f defined on an open interval i containing the real number a, and if the nth derivative of f exists and is continuous on i, then we can write down the sixth Taylor polynomial, uh, the nth Taylor polynomial for f about a, and that is the polynomial given by this expression here. And the idea here is, of course, that f uh, is approximated by the Taylor polynomials for x near a. Uh, in the in the previous video, we looked at the error term. So, in other words, we want to know how good is our approximation. So, we look at the error. At the difference between the actual value of f and the approximation by the Taylor polynomial. We saw that if the n derivative f n plus 1 exists and is continuous on i, then we have at least three different expressions for the error. We can express the error as an integral or in this form here. So the error always depends on the n plus 1 -th derivative. So we can write down the error as fn plus 1 at tx, x minus tx to the n, x minus a over n factorial for some tx between a and x. Alternatively, one can express the error as the derivative fn plus 1 at sx, x minus a to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. And again, sx here is something between a and and x. Right. Now in this video I want to show how we can use these expressions for the error, in particular this last one, uh, to get bounds for the errors. In other words, we can see how accurate our approximation is without having to evaluate the error. Now, here's what we've got. So again, we have a function f defined on some open interval i containing the real number a, and the derivative fn plus 1 is, exists and is continuous on i. Now we take a little interval a minus d, a plus d contained in i. And if we can bound the derivative fn plus 1 by some constant m, so in other words, if the absolute value of this derivative fn plus 1 is less than or equal to m, for all x in this interval from a minus d to a plus d, then we can get a bound for the absolute value of the error en. The error en at x in absolute value is less than or equal to m. Right, so that's the m we get here from that derivative. x minus a to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. And this holds for all x in this interval a minus d to a plus d. And, and seeing how this comes about, well, it's a relatively simple application of this last expression for the error. Right. Because now what, are we, what have we got? We've got the error at x, and let's just put it in absolute value is equal to absolute value fn plus 1 evaluated at some point sx x minus a to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial right and here this sx between a and x so this we can write as absolute value fn plus 1 at sx times absolute value x minus a to the n plus 1 all over n plus 1 factorial. Now we must remember this sx here is between a and x. So if you've got a, a minus b, a plus d, and let's say x is over there, then 
our sx sits somewhere in here. So that means sx sits in this interval from a minus d to a plus d. That means we can use this inequality. At, at fn plus 1 at sx will be less than or equal to m. So we've got this less than or equal to m, x minus a to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Right. Now, let's see how we use this, this bound for the error. We look at an example. Right, we're going to take the function f of x to sine x, and we're going to find the sixth Taylor polynomial for f about a equals 0. Then we're going to use this p6 to approximate sine and a half, and then finally we'll get an upper bound for the error. Right, that'll tell us how accurate our approximation is. So let's start off by finding p6. Right. So remember f of x is sine x. Now to find p6 we need derivatives of f up to order 6. But because we're also interested in the error term for p6 we're going to have to find derivatives up to order 7. So this is luckily not something that's difficult to differentiate. So the derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of cosine minus sine, so therefore the third derivative minus cosine, fourth derivative is back to sine, fifth derivative cosine x, sixth derivative is minus sine x again, and the seventh derivative, remember we need this one for the error, that's going to be minus cosine x again. And because we're taking the Taylor polynomial about a equals zero, we need to evaluate all of these expressions at zero. So we need f at zero, which is 0, first derivative at 0, which is 1, second derivative at 0 is 0 again, third derivative at 0 minus 1, fourth derivative at 0 is 0, the fifth derivative at 0 1 again, and the sixth derivative at 0 is 0. Right. So now we can write down the Taylor polynomial. Right, remember p6 at x, that's going to be f at 0 plus first derivative at 0 times x. Remember this should be x minus a, but our a is 0. Then it's plus one half second derivative at zero x squared plus one over three factorial, so that's one over six third derivative at zero x to the three plus one over four factorial, so that's one over twenty four fourth derivative at zero x to the fourth plus 1 over 5 factorial, that's 1 over 1, 20, fifth derivative at 0, and the last term, 1 over 6 factorial, so that's uh, 7, 20, f6, uh, there's an x to the fifth missing, f6 at 0, x to the sixth. And now we just plug in the values we found for the derivative. Right. f at 0 is 0. First derivative is 1. So we have x. Second derivative is 0. Third derivative is minus 1. So we get minus 
1 over 6x cubed. Fourth derivative is 0 again. Fifth derivative is 1. So we get plus 1 over 120 x to the fifth and the sixth derivative is zero so the last term falls away so here we've got our sixth Taylor polynomial for f of x is sine x about x equals zero now we approximate sine a half using this Taylor polynomial so sine of a half is f and a half and that is supposed to be approximately equal to the six Taylor polynomial and a half so if we plug x equals a half back into our back into our expression for p6 we get one half minus one over six half to the three one over eight plus one over 120 one over two to the five gives you 32 and if you evaluate this expression we get 0 0.4794427 so using the six Taylor polynomial for sine x about x equals 0 we get sine a half approximately 0 0.479427 now how good is this approximation now we have to look at the error estimate. Right. So we're going to use our estimate we discussed in the beginning of the of the of the uh, of the video. Right. So which interval are we going to take? Well, ideally one takes the smallest interval that you can, because the idea is that the approximation gets better the closer you are to 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 the point about which you take the Taylor polynomial. Right, and we approximate it sine a half. So we take the interval minus a half to a half. Now we want to the error for the sixth Taylor polynomial. That means we must look at the seventh derivative of f. Right, so we must find an m which bounds the seventh derivative of f from, a, from above and below on the interval i. And then the error for the sixth Taylor polynomial, so E6 of x will be less than or equal to m x to the 7 over 7 factorial. And that's for all x in this interval i. Right. So the 7 there, remember that's n plus 1, because our 6 here is n. And that 7 there, n plus 1. Right. So our job is basically to find this m. What is this m going to be for our, for our function? Well, recall that we calculated the seventh derivative for f, and that gave us minus cosine x. So what we see is that absolute value of the seventh derivative is less than or equal to 1 for x in i because cosine x is bounded above and below by 1 and minus 1 respectively. So the absolute value is less than or equal to 1. And this is the best we can do. Right? This is our best estimate, our best upper bound for the seventh derivative of this function f. So this is our best bound. Right? Because if we evaluate absolute value f7 at 0, we get 1. And 0 is a member of this interval i we're working on. So we can't do better than saying 7th derivative of f less in absolute value is less than or equal to 1 on this interval. So what we can now do is we plug this m, so that's our m, into that expression. So we get e6 at x less than or equal to absolute value x to the 7 over 7 factorial. That's for all x in i. Now, in particular, when x is a half, and that's where we, where we are working because we estimated sine a half using p6 of a half, that we can say, 
the absolute value of the error at a half is less than or equal to so this is 1 over 2 to the 7 over 7 factorial so this is 1 over 2 to the 7 7 factorial and that is a pretty small number that is approximately 1.5 five zero zero nine nine times ten to the minus six so what does this tell us this tells us that in our approximation sign a half approximately equal to the six Taylor polynomial at a half is going to be accurate at least to the fifth decimal. Right. That's because what is this? It's going to be zero comma zero 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 one five five zero zero nine nine. Right. And you see those fifth decimal places the error is zero. That means sine and a half and P six and a half agree in those five decimal places. Right. So this is one way of using the error estimate. Once you have found an approximation for a function value, you can use this kind of error estimate to see how accurate you are. In the next video, we'll discuss another application.